The tissues of our bodies are made up of trillions of cells, each with their own structure and function. And if you take a closer look, you'll see that some cells are happier and more energetic than others. Why? Because these energetic cells have active mitochondria that produce enough energy, or ATP, needed to keep the cell functioning normally. Think of this as the fuel needed to power the engine that drives the cell. There are times, though, when genetic mutations prevent the mitochondria from producing enough ATP to keep the cell functioning. Over time, this ATP deficiency can lead to the onset of symptoms like those seen in Friedrich's ataxia. In healthy mitochondria, a protein called frataxin plays an essential role in producing ATP and maintaining iron homeostasis. For patients with Friedrich's ataxia, the amount of frataxin protein is too low. Frataxin deficiency not only lowers the amount of ATP produced, but it can also cause a buildup of excess iron in the cell. Too much iron can trigger reactive oxygen species, also known as ROS, that eventually cause oxidative stress, resulting in damage to DNA and essential proteins, which can ultimately cause cells to stop functioning altogether. Because Friedrich's ataxia is a multi-system disease, many tissue types can be affected. For example, frataxin deficiency in cardiac and nervous tissue can cause symptoms of cardiomyopathy and loss of muscle coordination. But there is hope in gene therapy. Gene therapy is the process of adding genetic material directly into cells through a non-infectious viral vector to compensate for genes that are not working. For Friedrich's ataxia patients, gene therapy may be used to deliver a functioning frataxin gene into the nucleus of the target cells. The new frataxin gene, without the mutation, will generate frataxin protein for the mitochondria. Gene therapy for Friedrich's ataxia will likely not be a cure, but rather a part of a patient's treatment plan. Several gene therapy approaches may be needed to target the different affected cell types. And the degree of therapeutic impact will, presumably, depend on the stage of disease when gene therapy is administered. It is also important to note that there are outcome uncertainties with gene therapies, so clinical trials are needed to understand variability in treatment effects. Many researchers are actively working to develop gene therapy for Friedrich's ataxia. They are collaborating with a larger community of other rare disease scientists, regulatory agencies like the FDA, industry partners, patients, and the Friedrich's Ataxia Research Alliance to share information and optimize gene therapy approaches for Friedrich's Ataxia. Please continue your education on gene therapy by viewing other modules in this series on the FARA website.